finally, we'll end by looking at synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers are derived from such material as natural gas, oil, and coal, all those petroleum-based resources. Because of the initial synthesis of the monomers, the term synthetic was applied to these fibers. So just a little history. Uh, you're looking at two things, um, two images. On the left, you're looking at an image from World War I. In World War I, our soldiers actually used silk parachutes uh, to fight the war and to kind of land at the different locations. By the Second World War, they would be using a new material called nylon. On the right, you're looking at what's called hose. You know, I still call them nylons, um, but they're hose, they're, you know, and depending on the, the manufacturer, different terms. Those were originally made of silk. Then they were made of nylon, and then they were a little scarce because they needed nylon and silk to make parachutes in World War II. A fun fact, I don't know if it's a fun fact, but returning soldiers um, oftentimes would, had, still had access to these parachutes, and they would return home with a silk parachute, and brides would use those silk parachutes to create their wedding dress. So nylon, that's your swatch number 24. It's a really kind of bad sample, but you get, you get the feel of it. <laughs> um, nylon was called the miracle fiber. It was the first fiber to be made from a petroleum-based synthetic resource and then manufactured. So it's, it's, a, it's a completely kind of artificial man-made fiber. So it was called the miracle fiber. As we move and we get closer to more of a sustainable world, we know that maybe that is not a miracle. And that's something that we will have to address or our children or their children's children will have to address for a sustainable uh, future. Uh, so this is nylon. Nylon is extremely lightweight and, for st and strong. So it is a good choice for upholstery. So, most of our car interiors are made of some type of carpeting is made up some type of nylon most broad loom carpet nylon and then some upholstery fabrics so the positive uh, characteristics is that it's strong uh, it has an inherent sheen elastic with good recovery wet cleanable Abrasion resistance, it could be solution dyed. So that carpet, that shag green olive carpet by my grandmama, it's always going to be that olive green. It's not going anywhere. Dyed in a wide range of colors, low most moisture absorbance. So if, you, if you spilt wine on your stain master carpet, it's just sitting there on the surface. And it's flame resistant. So positive characteristics. We're going to talk about some of that, even that sheen is not always positive. So let's see what kind of the limitation. So the limitation that it has that, I don't think that sheen is good. It looks artificial to me. It has a harsh hand and less modified. Um, it can be susceptible to sunlight deterioration. So it's, we don't use it in the outdoors. It, um, it conducts static electricity and it may melt. So I have just a little couple stories. I know we don't have very much time, but I really want you to know this. So my, my students that are in, uh, closer to my age group, um, you know, broadloom carpet everywhere. So to, to antagonize your siblings, you would run around the house and you would shuffle your feet on the carpet in the winter time and you would go around the house and you try to shock each other, right? You try to give them an electrical shock. So you can't really do that anymore. <laughs> and the reason why you can't do that anymore is, yes, nylon naturally um, conducts static electricity. So they put a treatment in it so it no longer does that. So we can check that off. It doesn't do that anymore. The sheen can appear artificial. 
So in the 1980s, emerald green, mauve and teal carpet all had this shiny artificial surface to it, and it was so ugly. You can check that kind of off now too. You can check that off now too because now they texture and they crimp and they do all these things to the fiber that they resemble so much closer now to actual wool carpet. So definitely modified and definitely things that are happening to this so that they're, um, you know, just really kind of, in terms of look and performance, a great option. But let's talk about May Melt. So as I've mentioned, most of my career was working with model homes. And sometimes I told you those draperies would come in and they would be wrinkled. So we always had an iron with us. Uh-oh, you know where the story is going. We always had an iron with us. But I always warned our design assistants and designers, do it on the tile because if that iron goes over the edge of your cotton that you're ironing or something that you're lying, if it goes over the edge of the towel, it's going to melt your carpet. And the reason why I know this, because my first house I ever, home I ever purchased as a single woman, my best friend, who is still my best friend, moved in with me. She had ironed her clothes on the floor of our carpet in my brand new condo, my brand new condo, and she put melt marks all over, right there in the middle of the floor, all over my carpet. So I, t I tell you my stories because I never had an accident in a builder's model home after having that terrible experience in my own first condo. <laughs> so um, it's just a story that I share for you to remember. Olefin carpet, nylon carpet, it, 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 it can melt really easily. So watch out for that. Here's nylon. There's a question on the test. Um, one question is, what is the most um, widely used fiber in the United States? And that's going to synthetic fiber. That's going to be polyester. But the most widely used fiber, synthetic fiber for carpet is nylon. So rarely used in bedding. So here's nylon polyester bedding. I mean, maybe it's shiny and it's formal, but it sure would not feel good to sleep in. Next swatch is swatch 25. And for those of you listening who are gonna watch the recording, um, you should feel that nice swatch. It's, it has that nice diagonal twill weave and we'll, we'll look at that soon. Um, but it should feel soft and it should feel like flannel, like a nice, like a nice wool flannel, especially on the front. So, that is actually not wool. This is actually acrylic. And acrylic is used in two main purposes for interior design. It's used in outdoor fabrics and it's used to resemble wool. So it doesn't shrink. It's hypoallergenic and it's hydrophobic. So it's a, a, a substitute for wool. And you guys are pretty quiet today, but maybe you'll share some of your experiences. Um, so here's, these are just images from Pottery Barn. So the majority of these lovely throws, I call wool throws, from Pottery Barn are actually made of acrylic. So I'm, I'm actually at having you go there and take a look at those. Um, just beautiful. Again, scientists have found the way to mimic wool, to give acrylic, this very synthetic product, that look. So it's it can be either dry or wet spun. It is a synthetic project. It, it's engineered. Again, scientists have engineered it to look like wool. It's inherent resistant to moths, unlike wool, carpet beetles, unlike wood. 
and the outdoor elements makes it just really superior to sunlight exposure. So let's look at a negative. There, there's, there's all the positive characteristics. There it is. There, so take a look at that. Ask me if I will ever buy one of these beautiful throws from Pottery Barn again. And the answer is no. You may never say never. They're such great colors <laughs> and great and great knits. Um, but I won't. Um, because they it fuzzes or it pills. So those wonderful throws that I purchased in acrylic, um, and, and not to dis pottery barn, it's not pottery barn, it's it's the fiber. Um so gorgeous like I had to have it it's my favorite time of the year to shop is the fall season when all of a sudden it's not hot anymore in Phoenix Arizona and everyone goes to the store to buy pumpkins and you know cinnamon and, and get all their nice I guess winter stuff for Phoenix so my beautiful throw fuzzed and pilled fuzz mean it just the yarn started falling apart pills meant it had little balls on it and I'm going to be truthful it, it didn't really even survive the first fall winter season. It started looking really tattered very quickly. So that's the negative point of it. Another ne negative point um, is that it may feel like oil or oily. So you can't feel it in this example. They've, they've done a pretty good job here. But if you're outside next time and you're sitting on outdoor fabrics you know outdoor materials kind of touch it and it feels like it has an oily surface so it feels like um like you left your suntan oil on but that's actually because acrylic is made of petroleum it's made of that oily material so you feel that sometimes and it doesn't feel natural so they haven't been able to get rid of that yet it loves oil so this is a negative. It can oil, if you're putting your suntan oil on outside, the oil gets soaked up into the, the, the fabric and it's hard to release it. So you have to treat those stains very quickly or else sometimes it's just gonna grab that oil stain and it'll never let it go. So I've had problems with outdoor fabrics with oil as, as some of you might have um, maybe experienced in your own home. So most, um, awnings are, are made of acrylics. Most outdoor fabrics are made of acrylic. But I just wanted to kind of show you these pictures because even in a picture, you can kind of see that very oily artificial surface. So that's why it takes some time for acrylic to mimic wool. So again, I don't judge, but these are probably, you know, like from the dollar store or something and they have that very shiny oily appearance versus acrylic from William Sonoma home that you know I walked by thought I was buying a wool throw so it takes some some effort to, to get there so the the designer synthetic <laughs> the designer synthetic um, and popular fiber is polyester so that's swatch 26. So here you see polyester, which has that nice silky quality. It, it, you know, it could look like silk, it could imitate silk. This is another one that I get fooled quite often. Is it silk or is it polyester? So I feel like manufacturers have gotten really good at mimicking silk with polyester. So this is um, polyester in your in your swatch number 26. And this bed that you're looking at, this is called that microfiber or that miracle fiber that that looks like brushed suede. So that's polyester too. That's extruded polyester in sheets and then brushed to look like suede. So we'll look at that a little more. But it's so diverse, and you're going to find all types of samples. Um, although only available since 1953, its importance has grown dramatically for the interior design textile industry. Um, excluding soft floor covering, 
we do see polyester rugs, but just in very, you know, small rugs, maybe rugs for kids. Um, we're seeing a move to try to, you know, kind of deal with our plastic mess. And so we're beginning to see rece recycled plastic bottles are being transformed into fiber for the home furnishings market. So we're seeing good things uh, with that. So the positive characteristics, it can be modified to really resemble wool and carpet applications. So I do see that blended in carpet sometimes. Um, it can have a soft hand, it's stable, it's not going anywhere. Um, isn't it why, even though it, polyester doesn't feel good against our bodies, that when we don't want to, I don't know about you, but when I don't want to iron or think about it, I throw on a polyester dress because it looks perfect, you know, <laughs> always. Um, it resists sunlight fading and deterioration, uh, and it may be heat set. So there is a question on the quiz about heat setting. So polyester can be heat set. Has anyone seen a fabric that has pleats in it, but the pleats aren't sewn in or created? like through, you know, through construction. If you haven't seen a pleated textile, um, if you have seen one, you can actually like make, you can actually pleat up this polyester sample. And if you have an iron with maybe a little bit of wax paper over it, you can actually pleat in and melt in, heat set in those pleats. So those pleats are here to stay. They're <laughs> setting in like a, a, a forever perm or something. So because it can be solution dyed, uh, it accepts that color very well. It, it can be very fine like silk, so it's uh, drapeable, not affected by water, heat, or age. Um, polyester burns, but it self extinguishes. So if you're going to do the burn test, if you put a flame to the polyester, it'll just kind of melt and then self-extinguish right there. And it doesn't wrinkle. So in my in my stories of my draperies in my life, catching on fires in model home, where one design firm came, came to find that they burnt a house down, I came to my site and had this big melted hole in my drapery panels. So my drapery panels luckily for polyester. So why it isn't used very often in carpet is it, it kind of has that, still has that oily texture, it crushes. Um, so it's kind of a weak carpet fiber. It also loves oil. So it's hard to get those oil stains out. And here are many, many of the applications. So for your today's discussion, when I asked you to look for polyester, I'm sending you to Knoll. I'm sending you to Knoll to see how often it is used for contract commercial fabrics. On the right, you're looking at ch uh, child's, uh, children's bedding. And we know that polyester doesn't breathe well. That's one of its limitations. We, we know that it doesn't naturally wick um, unless modified and treated. So, you know, why do we see it here used in, ch in children's bedding? versus cotton, linen, rayon, modal, et cetera. It's because children um, are hard on their bed linens. And I'll just say, you know, urine, getting sick, dirt, all that stuff. So sometimes when we see children's bedding, it will be made of polyester, but rarely for our adult clients. So here's polyester for children's upholstery. Here's polyester for indoor outdoor draperies. Uh, swatch number 27, and we have like a minute left, and I think we're good, is olefin. So just touch that olefin. The only time I use this as an interior designer is for it's on it's what it, backing on carpet. So most carpet backing is olefin. It's really awful scratchy stuff. And it also is used for rugs. So actually the rug that my best friend melted in my first condo was an olefin rug. It really has a, um, 
an easy melting point. Okay, it's just really sensitive. So um, take care of that um, temperature, even when you're drying or ironing. So on the quiz, backing for carpet, outdoor carpets, that's on the NCIDQ, outdoor carpets, um, very durable mats, that would be olefin. So there you're looking at that very durable carpet. Um, your last sample is um, a sample that I've never used before as an interior designer. Um, it's a very strong fiber and it has very practical uses. So maybe I just don't do a lot of practical interiors. It's what the protective gear for our firefighters are made out of. So it has that, um, that strong property and good for high traffic areas. It's, it's fire protective. Um, the only sample that I can find of it used in an interior that I found acceptable was here used for these two chairs where they actually just wound this product into a braid or a cord and then wove that into a chair. So I've never used it as an interior designer. Um, it is in your textbook, so I wanted to address it, and maybe study up on it a little more. I thank you all and I hope you enjoy the last Sec, um, section. And next week we move on to yarn and weaving.